What's up, everyone? Aaron Nagler here, PackersNews.com. Day three of the NFL draft is underway, and the Packers have made a couple of selections. We've got a bit of a break here, unless they trade up before they pick uh, twice at the bottom of the round. So I thought I'd jump on and uh, see what's on everyone's mind, see how they're feeling about it after the Packers select a wide receiver and an offensive tackle. Um, clearly, they spent day one and two bolstering their defense, and now... As if Ted Thompson never left, they have taken a big, tall, on the slow side wide receiver and a offensive tackle who projects to slide into guard. Those are classic Packers moves and it sure seems like uh, an attempt to bolster the middle of their line and provide another perimeter receiver for the offense. I cannot believe the Pat Green Bay did not pick Griffin. You know, teams stay true to their character, and uh, with Seattle on the board there, I knew they wanted to reunite him with his brother, and there you have it. Tight end, Joshua, I think it's, you know, definitely in play. We'll see what happens in these next couple rounds. I think Fumagalli is a possibility. I know a lot of Badgers fans are interested. Um, I had expected them to be interested in Ian Thomas, and then he went with the very first pick of the day, so that one's off the board. I heard he's fast, just a slow combine. Uh, not necessarily. I mean, he plays faster. I think that's what the Packers will want to sell you on, and I, that you know may be true. Um, he definitely looks to be able to create separation. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, it's really hard to say until you see him. And you know, college tape is one thing; doing it against NFL caliber defensive backs is another. Uh, but you know, he's he was incredibly productive uh, these last two years, two 1,000 plus yard seasons in the SEC. That's no joke. Let's see, got a right tackle, we definitely need one. Uh, James, he won't play right tackle, he'll be sliding into guard. John Eric Sullivan already told us that. We're going to pick Griffin. Miles, he was already selected. Uh, Seattle, just picked him a little while ago. What's worse, pre-draft speculation or post-draft speculation? Yes, Ben. Um, what's your thoughts on Jamon Moore? I, I mean, like I just said, he's incredibly productive, done it at a high level against high level competition, so you like that. It's a classic Green Bay Packers wide receiver. Big, strong, uh, maybe not the fastest guy, maybe not a burner, but uh, plays faster than maybe he tested. It'll be interesting to see, like I said, how he does against NFL competition. Uh, but, you know, the big guy in their offense, you know, the weather turns, that's the way they've always liked it ever since Ron Wolf came to town in 91. Uh, he fits that prototypical mold. Um, obviously, he's selected a little later than guys like Greg Jennings, James Jones, etc. But he's got a ton of upside. He's still pretty raw, and he's got a lot of growing to do as a pro and as a player. But, you know, the potential is there. I don't expect him to come in and light the world up, especially in a Packers offense, which is one of the more sophisticated in the NFL. But um, I think he'll be given every opportunity to, to contribute early. Uh, so 12 picks on Thursday, but end with only five players. Uh, it's a possibility. What about, uh, yeah, a lot of CG questions. Um, uh, yeah, I know Daniel Jeremiah was just on NFL Network touting him. Uh, I think he's certainly a possibility. Uh, obviously, teams haven't seen him play a whole lot of football the last you know, 18 months. So um, I wouldn't think he falls too much further, but yeah, he may be getting picked as we, as we speak. Madison looks awesome. Uh, I'll tell you what, we just talked to Sam Seal, the West Coast scout, and... You know, you made the joke. Washington State throws the ball a whole lot. I think they threw it 666, 68 times or something like that this year. And he said, you know, they throw the ball a lot, and the Green Bay Packers throw the ball a lot, so the projection is easy. Uh, clearly, they, they, they think his pass protection is a plus, and uh, obviously, when you've got Aaron Rodgers, you want to keep him upright. So, you know, it's like, again, much like uh, the wide receiver is a classic. Green Bay Packers selection, Madison is, I mean, straight down the line, exactly what the Packers have done the last decade or so when it comes to the offensive line. Find uh, guys with great feet, great footwork, uh, really athletic, able to move, perimeter guys who probably won't cut it in the NFL as perimeter guys, but then move them into guard, and uh, away they go. Uh, it's been the formula. It's been very good to them, and obviously – uh, Madison is a guy that they've touted that they think can 
make the same kind of transition. Do you think Des Bryant is still a possibility? Yes, I do. Uh, even with the addition here in the fourth round, uh, they come out of the they come out of the draft, and Bryant is still there and amiable towards a one year deal. You know, everything's possible. Do you think we will pick an edge rusher and a tight end? I don't know about edge rusher. There's not a whole lot left. Um, sweat went a little while ago. Uh, tight end, I do think, is a good possibility. Uh, Juan Fumagalli, we talked about him a little while ago, but yes, I think he's d a distinct possibility uh, in some of the later rounds, like 6-7. Let's see. Need safeties. I don't know, Tony. I don't think it's a glaring need. I'm sure they could use some depth. But, and I... I say this knowing that there are always exceptions, but for the most part, and I hate to break this to you, the draft is over. Um, the actual NFL contributors found in rounds five and later are very few and far between. Um, you'll, you'll have some projects, you'll have guys maybe that jump up and flash in camp, etc. But for all intents and purposes, what the Packers have now will probably be the bulk of the contribution they get both from this rookie class and moving forward. I'll take one or two more guys. Still have to get back downstairs. More online help? Yep, you got that right. Phil, that is very nice of you to say. I haven't spoken for, but thank you. Any edge rushers we potentially trade for? Um, nobody leaps to mind, Paul. I mean, you know, traditionally edge rushers, if they're any good at all, teams like to hoard them and hold on to them. Maybe someone comes free in Philadelphia since they have really, I mean, loaded up on that defensive front, um, you know, that might be a possibility after the draft. Is Burke's special teams or challenging Martinez? I don't know about challenging Martinez. I think he'll play a similar role Joe Thomas did, uh, at least to start out, probably playing the dime a lot. But, um, yeah, I, don't, I, I think Martinez is okay for now. Packers do not need to draft a tight end this year, exclamation point. No, I don't think they need to, but I think, um, you know, one of the things you want to do in a draft is to you know, grow your position groups. And the Packers have been barren at tight end for a long time, which is why they keep having to swing for the fences in free agency. It wouldn't have cost them anything to you know, take a tight end in the third or fourth that they could potentially you know, develop, but that's probably out of the woods at, at this point. Um, but yeah, you're right. They don't need, they, there was no immediate need there. Um, although, they probably could use another body. I mean, it's not like they're that, that, you know, Emmanuel Bird sitting behind Kendricks and uh, Jimmy Graham is you know, the extent of their depth at this point. Package all of these sevens for something higher? Rick, i got to think they'll, they'll try to. I mean, you know, all those seventh round picks are really not going to amount to much. But you never know. We'd, I'm not sure how Gutekunst is going to feel about that and how he's going to approach it. All right, everybody, I'm going to have to jump. I have to get back downstairs. Thanks for hopping on. I'll be back probably... Either later in the draft or once, it, once the Packers are done and wrapping up. Um, in the meantime, make sure you're checking PackersNews.com. Tom Silverstein's live blog is going on. Check that out. He called the Moore pick about a half hour before it happened. So make sure you get on that. He's full of insight and analysis. Um, PackersNews.com. Check it all out. Thanks a lot, everyone. See you soon.